Kevin Durant was probably one of the most life athletes, especially coming up in his OKC days where he would battle LeBron James and the Miami Heat Beatles into the finals. But everything kind of changed when he moved to Golden State and became one of the most disliked people of all time. And there's been a couple reasons for that. One of the biggest reasons is the fact that he stacked the deck so heavily in his favor. We have seen teams where, you know, there it might be considered a super team and, you know, the standard of whatever they were playing in back in the day. But when you look at historically great teams and you see that, you know, you have a team in Golden State where they won 60, 70 games in the regular season, they might not have won a chip, but they were stacked. You know, they still had Draymond Green in his prime, Stephen Curry was uh, in his prime, Klay Thompson was shooting great before he got injured. You had Sean Livingston coming off the bench, you had Festus Azili, Kevon Looney was a, young, uh, was a youngster back in the day. So basically the whole team was stacked and built around success and the way that the team was constructed was built around just sharing the ball and having good ball movement and also spacing the floor out with Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson. However, when they lost to them in the Western Conference Finals, you could see that, you know, people were expecting him to leave, but nobody expected him to go to Golden State. But when he did, man, that made shockwaves. And this is when perspective on Kevin Durant changed so drastically and saying that that was the weakest move by a superstar and that, you know, in all honesty, I understand. It was it was terrible. It, it was one of the worst moves that you could do, especially for your career. Not in the sense that he's not going to win any rings because we all knew he was going to win some rings at least. But just from the fact that you, you stacked it so much in your favor that almost like if you're a competitor, it's like, how can you how can you really go against that? How can you really respect the success? Right. We can respect the Golden State Warriors, but we all knew that the Golden State Warriors are going to go into the playoffs and go into the finals because there's just no other team or teams outside of maybe Houston who had a couple of good tries that was able going to even edge them out. But this is when the idea of super teams really took a hold because many people thought that, let's say like LeBron James, for example, started a super team in Miami. I wouldn't classify that as super team. In my eyes, I think a super team is more so when you have so many superstars and all-stars that is it literally just stacks the deck. I think when LeBron James joined the team, Chris Bosh was just now, very similar to how Kevin Love joined the team in the Cavs, Chris Bosh was just now getting his feet. He was an exciting young star out there in Toronto, but he wasn't by no means a superstar Dwayne Wade was coming off of injuries and so you know the heat wasn't really the greatest destination but they they brought everybody together and they won a couple championships in my eyes when you have three superstars like bona fide superstars that is considered a super team especially with the way that how the team is going to be constructed but I'll get back to that later on in the video now we all saw that Kevin Durant and the super team that he formed at Golden State was too much but, you know, there comes times where you want to be the bus driver that Charles Barkley critiqued Kevin Durant to not being. And so he joined the Brooklyn Nets, which we all thought was going to happen, especially when things leaked out in the press. And so when he joined the Brooklyn Nets, you know, we had Kyrie on the team. And so, you know, he was already out from his injuries, his Achilles injury. And Kyrie was basically saying to the press that, hey, this team is not going to do it and that they need a bigger star. And that bigger star that they really need, especially in the next season after Kevin Durant was out the whole season, was James Harden, who by all his faults, right, was still one of the best players you possibly can have. So I would consider that to be a super team, especially with the way that they had contention in the East. There is no way that you would not consider them to be a super team. And here's one of the things that many people do not talk about when it comes to super teams is the fact that in order for a super team to work, let's say you have three players because you need at least three superstars in order to make it work. Outside of that, you just have like a pretty decent team is the fact that it relies so much on health of these players than anything else. If you have a system of two superstars and majority of your team being great role players, very similar to how the Denver Nuggets has done it, then you don't really have to rely on your stars to be consistently great. You know, you can rely on one star be consistently great and then the other star can kind of just fill in the role. But at the end of the day, if the system is built around both those stars and the system is built well, then there's no reason why they can't make a deep playoff push. But the problem with super teams is that you put so much onus on those three players to be healthy because you gut the team. You gut the team. Unless you have a really decent, you know, couple, you know, rising stars coming from rookies or their second years, you know, you're usually not going to have that many great players, great role players on your team because most of the money is going to three players. And we saw that happening in Brooklyn where you had Kyrie going in and out of the lineup for also, you know, out of court issues, 
but also, you know, from injuries. And then you also had James Harden dealing with injuries as well. And then you also had Kevin Durant dealing with injuries, which gave the Brooklyn Nets, who was supposed to be touted as one of the most exciting teams to watch, ended in failure. And it really ended in failure because of injuries. You know, if James Harden didn't injure his hamstring, maybe they could have made it a little bit farther. Maybe it could have been a little bit more useful. If Kyrie didn't roll his ankle on Giannis's foot, maybe they could have won it. But at the end of the day, even without those stars, if you built the team correctly, if you build the team with, you know, intentions to have really good role players and a really good system, then Kyrie being out is not that big of a deal. Same way how the Denver Nuggets are pretty good without Murray, and they can still win with Jokic, even though Jokic does have to be great. But since the system revolves around him and he's a great playmaker, he gets everybody involved. So it works anyway. But for the Brooklyn Nets, it just didn't seem to click because they were too busy being injured. And then he brought that all the way to Phoenix because he saw that Brooklyn's not going to cut it. James Harden already left by then. Kyrie requested a trade. And then boom, now he's in Phoenix. And now he's in Phoenix with DeAndre Ayton, Devin Booker, and CP3, which in my eyes... I wouldn't consider that to be a super team. I would consider that to be a great team, a really, really good team, because I don't think DeAndre Aiden was in his prime yet or anything like that. Uh, CP3 is kind of exiting his prime. The only really, really good player he has is Devin Booker. But even with that, we still see that health really plays a role, because if those are your main contributors on offense, and it really it did work, um, then you, you have to make sure that they're all healthy. Chris Paul gets hurt. DeAndre Aiden just goes back to being a regular role player instead of the beast that he was before Kevin Durant came or even CP3 came. And then Devin Booker just doing Devin Booker things. You know, he'll never change in that regard. But to Kevin Durant, they're not winning. They're not winning at all. And it's just one of those things where it's like he's always had these health bugs and, you know, people being in and out of lineups. But it's also due part of the construction of the team, especially with the fact that DeAndre Aiden took a huge cut in the way that he had to play. He wasn't playing the way he was playing before, you know, CP3 joined the team. He just became a regular role man. And their head coach was making it work. I mean, the Spain pick and roll was their bread and butter. And the only reason why they lost, in my opinion, is that they got too far away from that. But even still, when you got rid of CP3 because you thought that it wasn't going to work, right? I'm not talking about Kevin Durant. I'm mostly talking about the management, right? You have CP3 out the way, and then boom, now you got Bradley Beal. And you got rid of DeAndre Ayton, who's pretty much not playing up to par. And so the same thing keeps happening again and again. Because now you have to pretty much focus on the fact that maybe Bradley Beal's not all the way healthy. And he's dealing with a really, really bad back injury. And if he's not healthy, well, then now your team is not really constructed to win with the two superstars that it really is supposed to be constructed to win with three. And I hate seeing people like Brandon Jennings who say that Kevin Durant needs to get out of there. It's not a good situation. And I don't know if Kevin Durant is actually wanting to leave and wanting to get out, and especially even though there are rumors and I don't know how true they are. So I won't even speak to them, but I hate the idea that Kevin Durant needs more help or Kevin Durant needs to leave. This is the bed that he has made and he has to deal with the problems that come with it. If you're going to consistently deal with super teams the way that he has almost always been in outside of OKC, you're going to have to deal with these problems. And in my opinion, I don't think that if he really wanted CP3 to stay, that he could have made him untouchable. Because CP3 staying on this team, even with all his faults and not being healthy, was the best course for this team. They need to get rid of DeAndre Aiden. But having Bradley Bill is definitely going to make things a little bit different. But Devin Booker has been the one person who's actually been, you know, changing his game. Kevin Durant is still doing Kevin Durant things. But what will happen when consistently we have Bradley Bill on the court? And in my eyes, I think they will actually mesh. It would actually make sense. And we will never see these, oh, Kevin Durant needs to leave and he needs to find a better situation for himself because the team is built around those three players. But the same thing always comes back to Kevin Durant is the fact that every one of those superstars have to be healthy, have to be healthy. And with the amount of games that Bradley Bill has missed due to ankle injury and his back injury, you have the one question, does he even have the conditioning to stay in the game? We're getting into halfway in the season. He hasn't really played many games. Devin Booker and Kevin Durant is pretty much carrying the whole load. And the role players aren't necessarily that great either. You know, we see clips of Devin Booker yelling at his teammates saying, if you're going to turn over the ball, why aren't you getting back? And you're just seeing that and you're just saying, okay, this is a really bad situation. But it's a bad situation from the jump. 
because I don't think superstars having three of them on a single team without a cohesive system that makes it work is going to work for anyone. I mean, we've seen it. I mean, if we're going to compare it to the Denver Nuggets championship, you know, Denver Nuggets had Aaron Gordon, Bruce Brown, the Braun kid, and there's a couple others that I just can't think of their names. But the way that the offense works is it works off of playmaking. It works off of Jokic's playmaking. And in order for them to have any resemblance to that offense in terms of the Suns, they're going to need Devin Booker to continue blazing that path of just being a playmaker. And listen, he's great, but you can only do so much when the team is just simply not built around Devin Booker's playmaking. It's built around three people scoring as many points as you possibly can and then breaking down the defense because there's no way you can guard all three without helping and if you help well then that's when the role players start making points and then that makes sense and then now everything is good in phoenix but this is something that has played kevin durant his whole career and it really brings into question is all of this his fault you can't blame injuries on him or anything like that injuries is one of the worst parts of the game you hate to see it but like i said multiple times in this video it's just par for the course for super teams you're bringing up the usage rate for a lot of players who probably would not have had that high of a usage rate and it's just it's just gonna happen and a lot of people will look at kevin durant especially if he were to leave phoenix now and seeing that he's hopping from team to team that maybe he's not as great as a superstar or a leader that we thought he was 